guys, this is geometry lesson 5-4, inequalities in one triangle. In this lesson, we'll be able to use theorems to compare the sides and angles of a triangle. First, let's look at the explore and reason. Um, we'll cut several drinking straws to the sizes shown. The only drinking straws I had were the fat ones, so I cut them in the sizes shown. Um, in class, if you're watching the video, um, please ask Ms. King for the straws if you would like to tangibly um, look at it and explore yourself. Highly recommended. Ask Ms. King. <laughs> um, okay, so I got 10 centimeter, seven, six, um, four, three and two, okay? Um, we're gonna look at two shorter straws, which is three centimeters and two centimeters, and our, our longest straw, which is 10 centimeter, okay? So having these two, uh, three straws, so it's very important to note that we chose the two shortest straw and one longest straw. Um, can they form a triangle? So I know it's a little bit thick, but um, it shouldn't be impossible to explore. So it shouldn't matter too much. So if we were to make a triangle, the shorter sides don't touch because these sides have to meet at the ends to make a triangle, right? Um, so two and three centimeters would be too short for a 10 centimeter side. The triangle is incomplete. You see that? So let's write that down. You can say that, no, the two shortest straws don't meet, right? The two centimeter and the three centimeter wouldn't meet. Part B, try different combinations of three straws to form triangles. Which side length combinations work? Okay. Um, so we got a lot of Draws here. That's 10, that's seven, this is three centimeter, um, that's two, the shortest one, six, and then here's four. Okay, using these straws, um, can we form a triangle? What are the combinations that work and what are the combinations that don't work? Let's see. Um, we can say, you maybe use um, 10 and longer straws, 10 and seven and six, maybe seven and six work, right? Cause they meet, right? So seven and six, what about four and seven? Oh, it's kind of short and it's kind of hard to, meet unless they meet here. So it's gonna be a lower triangle, like the roof is gonna be lower. Okay, what about seven and three? Seven and three cannot form a triangle because seven and three centimeters should be exactly 10 centimeters long, right? So it must make a straight line. So seven and three can only meet when they are in a straight line, which means there could not be an angle greater than zero degrees. So they're gonna be straight line, not a triangle. These three pairs cannot work. So what do you notice? Seven plus three is 10 centimeters. So which means you need two sides added up together, two shorter sides added up together to be greater than your side. It cannot be equal to or less than because then 
it's gonna make a straight line or they're just not gonna meet. So it must be the, the lengths of the shorter sides must be longer than the longest side of the triangle. Does that make sense? So looking at other combinations, you can work it out with seven centimeters on the bottom now. And you can say, oh, I can do four and six together to make a triangle. Um, but four and four and seven will be exactly seven again. So they're not going to form a triangle. Neither do, neither can four and two seven. Okay. So this way you can uh, look at all the Okay, so you can start listing those combinations part, in part B. I can make a triangle with 10 centimeters, seven, six, or 10 centimeters, seven, and four, or seven, six, four, and what else? You have four more combinations that you can make with um, these straws. Okay, can you come up with them by yourself? Okay. So seven, six, and three should also work because six plus three is nine and that's greater than seven. So you can form a triangle. Um, what about six centimeter? Um, you can have four and three, which is shorter one, add up to seven and it's greater than six. Um, one more for seven centimeters, seven, six, and two centimeters. Right, um, and how about four? Four, three, and um, two would also make a triangle. So these are all the combinations that you could make triangles with using uh, the different sizes of straws shown. Your other combinations, would not work. So you can say which combinations do not work. Um, all other combinations do not work. Okay. So part C, what do you notice about the relationship between the combined lengths of the two shorter sides and the length of the longest side? Can you summarize what you have just learned by um, doing this activity? Yeah, so basically, basically what can you not have and what can you have for the side lengths of a triangle? When you add the length of the two shorter sides, the sum has to be greater than the length of the longest straw. Let's write that down. Greater than the longest side. Okay. So keep that discovery in mind. You just discovered something really important for triangle size. So let's think about what are some relationships between the sides and angles of any triangle. Are there more relationships that um, what we have discussed about, um, about the sides and angles of any triangle? We'll look. Example one, investigate side and angle relationships. We're gonna draw a right triangle and a non-right triangle and see how the largest angle measure of each triangle would be related to the side lengths. So if you draw a right triangle, a random right triangle, angle A, which is the right angle would be the largest angle and the other two angles must be um, acute angles because why a triangle sum uh, theorem says that your all the angles must add up to 180 degrees and half of it is 90 degrees right so the other two angles must make 90 degrees which means they're going to be less than the angle that is a right angle, right? And so 
the side that is opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And hypotenuse is very special because that's the longest side of the right triangle. Okay. Um, if you look at any nine right triangles, this is an example on the right. Angle P, if angle P this is an obtuse angle, so greater than 90 degrees, um, then the other two must be even less acute angles than compared to the other smaller angles of the right triangle. Okay. Um, and so Q and R must be a Q and the largest angle P is across from the longest side QR. Okay, does that make sense? So what I, wherever the largest angle is, the side that is opposite to the largest angle would be the longest side. That makes sense because in order to have a big angle, you need to have bigger distance across. All right, keeping that in mind, let's look at try question number one. Which angle measure appears to be the smallest in triangle MMT? How is it related to the side lengths? Okay, so which angle do you think is the smallest, MP or N? Just by looking at it, it's fine if you just guess. Yeah, just by looking at it, you can already tell that angle N is going to be the smallest angle. And how is that related to the side lengths? We got eight feet, 23 feet, 26 feet. Obviously eight is the smallest of them all. Eight feet is the smallest of them all. So how is that related to um, the angle? Again, Looking at, thinking about example one, the largest angle appears to the opposite, uh, the longest side. So it also means that the smallest angle would be opposite to the smallest side, okay? So angle N is the smallest, okay? And angle N is opposite. to the shortest side length, so shortest side. All right, so that's what, that's basically theorem 5-9. If two sides of a triangle are not congruent, then the larger angle lies opposite the longer side, okay? So example two, we're gonna use theorem 5-9. To support a triangular piece of a float, a brace is placed at the largest angle and a guide wire is um, placed at the smallest angle. Which angle is the largest? Which angle is the smallest? So you can compare the side lengths to see which angle would be the largest and the smallest. Since 10 is less than 12 and 12 is less than 13. 10 is the smallest, 13 is the greatest, the longest, right? And then you can see the angle across them. It's, it helps, uh, it's very helpful that the colors are coordinated. So the opposite yeah, angle, oh, thanks. Okay, sorry for the interruption, but yes. So, um, so angle B would be the, the smallest angle because the opposite side is the shortest. Angle A would be the middle one. Um, and angle C would be the largest angle because the opposite side is the longest side. So when you have signs that are very similar and the angles that are very similar, you do not really know which one would be greater or less than just by looking at it, right? So use the theorem in order to figure out which angle or which side would be the smallest or the biggest. Okay, so using that knowledge, let's do try number two. Lucas, sketch a diagram for a garden box 
which angle is the largest and which angle is the smallest using the information of these side lengths shown. Um, using the theorem that we just looked at, 8, 14, and 10 would be our side lengths. Uh, so which angle is the largest? Look for the largest, the longest side, which is 14. The opposite angle of that longest side would be E. So that is the largest angle. Angle E is the largest. Part B, which angle is the smallest? In the same reasoning, find um, the angle that's opposite to the smallest, the shortest side, which is EF. So the opposite point would be D. Okay, not too hard, right? Let's look at the next page. So theorem 5-10 says, the converse of theorem 5-9, if two angles of triangle are not congruent, which is the opposite of um, the theorem 5-9, then the longer side lies opposite the larger angle, okay? So the angles would, are not congruent, then the longer side lies opposite the larger angle, which means in this, in this uh, triangle, if angle B is greater than angle A, then the longer one, the longer one is on the opposite, opposite side of the greater one. So if they're not equal, of course, if they're equal, their lengths would be the same, but might, might be the same, uh, would be the same. But like um, if the angles are not congruent, so something must be bigger than the other, right? Then the sides opposite to that angle, those angles would be greater or smaller compared uh, corresponding to the angles opposite. So proving theorem 5-10, we, uh, we want to prove that GH, side GH is greater than HJ using the information J is greater than angle G, okay? First, let's look at this flow proof. We're gonna, we're gonna show that assuming, first we're gonna assume that GH is H is equal to hj, which is not going to be true. We're going to assume that and prove that it's it's false and uh, contradicts itself so that we can prove it by contradiction, okay? So first assume that the, the lengths are equal. And then that means if their lengths are equal, they must be congruent. But triangle ghj, um, if they're congruent, it must be an isosceles triangle. And that means angle J and G, angle G must be equal to each other, which means uh, it, it's a contradiction to the given information. It's already given that angle I must be greater than G, not equal to G, right? So by the definition of congruence, which contra uh, it, uh, contradicts the given information, so the assumption is, is false, which means uh, GH is not equal to HJ, um, it must be greater than HJ. Okay, so this is an indirect proof. It doesn't directly prove that GH is greater than HJ, it just proves that, oh, they must be a different, it must not be a congruent um, length, but that's why. Let's look at try number three. To complete the proof of theorem 5-10, now we really want to complete the proof and show, um, assuming, show that assuming GH is less than HJ leads to a contradiction. Now we're not done yet, right? Because this just proves that, oh, GH and HJ must not be the same, which means it could be, GH could be greater than HJ or GH must be less than HJ. Um, and so we want to complete this proof by assuming what's not going to be true. Assuming GH is less than HJ and see if we can prove that, um, that it's, it also makes a contradiction to the given information. Okay, can we, can you do that by yourself? 
if uh, you can do it by yourself, go ahead and try and see if you can prove by reasoning um, in, this, in, in a similar way like this. If not, you can look at my explanation. So you will start by assuming, let me draw a flow chart as well. I'm gonna assume GH is less than HJ. That is an assumption. I'm also going to make a flow chart, okay? And then arrow, what does that lead to? By theorem 5.9, that means, we, yeah, we can use theorem 5.9. This is, we're proving the converse of theorem 5.9. So we already have theorem 5.9, okay? So by theorem 5.9, uh, it means measure of angle J, which is the opposite side of GH must be smaller than measure of angle G, which is the opposite side of HJ, right? And what does that lead to? This is a contradiction, right? Uh, so you can say, um, This contradicts the given information. Okay. And so this com finally, it must be that GH is greater than HJ. And now the proof is completed. So in example three, um, they didn't complete the proof, they just got you started with, and you're supposed to complete it by um, proving that GH m could not be less than HJ. Okay. All right, let's look at example four. Use theorem 5-10. So now using the converse, we can figure out some unknown um, information. So look at example four. Which side of triangle KLM is the longest? Just by looking at the angles, you can figure out the third angle, right? Subtract 50 and 62 from 180 and K is going to be 68. And now compare these angles, which one is the greatest angle? 68. So LM must be the longest side by using the theorem, uh, the 5 dash 10. Let's do number four, try. Identify the sides of NOP, which side is the longest, okay? Identify the sides, it means you don't have to solve for it. You just need to identify, like, how are you gonna call the sides? You can say, oh, there's side NO, there's side OP, and there's side MP, right? So, which side is the longest? You need to first figure out the missing information, the, the measure of angle O. The measure of angle O, um, it would be 180 minus 65 minus 58, which is 57 degrees, okay? So um, looking at these angles, which side would be the longest according to the angles? The greatest angle is N, 65, right? So the opposite side would be OP, and OP would be the longest side which side would be the shortest? Look at the smallest angle, 57. Oh, so the um, opposite side of angle O would be MP. MP would be the shortest, okay? So the answer to part A would be OP, part B would be MP. All right, there's another theorem, theorem 5-11, triangle inequality theorem on the next page. 
page. This, this theorem says that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side, which is what we started this lesson with. We explored the lengths of the triangle by using these um, straws, remember? And we discovered that the sum of the two shorter, the shortest side cannot be less than the longest side because it's not going to form a triangle that way, right? They're never the shortest sides are never going to meet if the sum is uh, less or if it's equal to. Um, if it's equal to the sh uh, if the two shortest sides is exactly equal to the longest side, then that means that they're going to be exactly as long as the longest side, which do not create an angle. So they're not they're still not going to make a triangle. So the sum must be greater than the longest side. Okay. So in this figure triangle, um, in this triangle, uh, all the sides labeled A, B, and C must follow this rule. A plus B must be greater than C, A plus C must be greater than B, B plus C must be greater than A. So no matter how short the sides are, any two sides must add up to a greater uh, side length than the third side, okay? Example five, use the triangle inequality theorem. So this is called the triangle inequality theorem and use this to figure out some problems. Which of the following sets of segments could be the size of a triangle? So look at the options and try to add the size to see which size could make a triangle. We already did this in the beginning of the lesson. So you'll be, you'll be good at it, hopefully. Look at set one, we got 18, 19, and 40. If you add 18 and 19, would it be greater than 40 is what you want to check. 18 plus 19 is 37, and it's less than 40. So the shorter sides would not meet each other. It's not going to be a triangle. So this is not possible. What about 33, 37, and 66? The shorter sides, 33 and 37, add up to 70, and that's greater than 66. So yes, a triangle could be formed. Part B, a triangle has sides that measure 11 centimeters and 16 centimeters. What are the possible lengths of the third side? So there could be many possible side lengths. You just need to find the minimum side length or the boundary and write an inequality so that you can say, oh, it's fine. It could be a triangle as long as it's greater than this much. Okay, so 11 and 16, in order to have a shorter side, you need to add X with 11 to be greater than 16. Okay, so you need to um, apply the triangle inequality theorem and be able to match, satisfy all the combinations of these uh, length sum. So 11 plus x must be greater than 16. 11 plus 16 must be greater than um, x. And 11 and 16 plus x should also be greater than 11. And this one, you don't need to wait, not that one. 16 plus x. This one, you don't even need to worry about it. You don't need, even need to check why 16 is already greater than 11. And if you add any number to 16, it's already going to be greater than 11, right? So you don't even have to check, check that. But you do need to check the other two um, inequalities. 11 plus what is equal to 16? 11 plus 5 is equal to 16. So 11 plus 5, wait, 11 plus x must be greater than 16, which means your x must be greater than 5. It cannot be equal to 5. It must be greater than 5. What about this one? 11 plus 16 must be greater than x. So 11 plus 16 is 27. So x must be, x cannot be greater than 
27 because if you add these two and it's shorter than your x then you cannot form a triangle so you got the minimum number for x which is five and the maximum is 11 plus 16 27 okay so x could be greater than five or less than 20 uh, and less than 27 and they cannot equal to 5 or 27. It must be greater than and less than 5 and 27. Okay? So any number between 5 and 27 is possible. Okay? So see if you can do try number 5 and come back when you're ready for answers. Part A, could a triangle have side length 16 meters, 39 meters, and 28 meters? You need to check all the different inequalities. So 16 plus 39 must be greater than 28. 39 plus 28 must be greater than 16. And what else? 16 plus 28 must be greater than 39. Do all the inequalities work? Check, check, check. So yes, this works, okay? Part B, a triangle has side lengths that are 30 inches, 15 inches. What are the possible lengths of the third side? So you need to, you, you also need to make um, expressions, three expressions for inequality. 30 plus X must be greater than 50. Um, 30 plus 15 must be greater than X. And 50 plus X must be greater than 30. Okay, what do you not have to worry about here? 50 plus X must be greater than 30. 50 is already greater than 30. So whatever you add, that's going to be true. So you don't need to worry about that cross that out. Um, so check these two. These are going to give you the minimum numbers and the maximum numbers. Okay. So 30 um, plus what is 20? 20 is equal to 50. 30 plus 50 is 80. So these are your minimum and maximum. So between 20 inches and 80 inches would be your answer. Okay, so let's summarize our lesson. Um, we've had several theorems in this lesson, theorems 5-9 and 5-10 um, basically say that the side, the, uh, the measure of sides and the measure of angles are um, proportional. They're related to each other. Um, so, but the opposite side of the greatest angle would be the longest one. The shortest, uh, the opposite of the shortest angle would be the shortest um, side. All right. Um, and triangle inequality theorem also states that the sum of lengths of any two sides must be greater than the length of the third side. All right, that was, um, Lesson 5 dash four inequalities in one triangle. We'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.